Tomorrow marks the anniversary of the 9-11 terrorist attacks, and it's a day that our next guest will certainly never forget. Joining us now, Michael Hinkson with his dog, Africa, his guide dog. Michael has an incredible story, born blind right here in Chicago, and he was working that day, that fateful day at the World Trade Center. Michael, great to have you with us today. Good to be here. Thank you very much. So, Michael, uh, you were on the 78th floor that day, and you had your guide dog at that time. It was a Roselle. faithful dog named Roselle. And how how in the world did you survive? Tell us about it. You know, um, we survived because we were a team. Roselle's job is to make sure that I walk safely and it's my job to know where to go and how to get there. So between the two of us uh, and the fact that we were helping other people in my office who were there that day um, to get to the stairs, we all worked together. We got to the stairs and we went down 78 floors, 1,463 stairs to get out of the building. For me, that was really the quiet part of the story because the, the main part was for me, we were 100 yards away from Tower 2 when it collapsed. Oh, wow. And everyone had to run. And again, Roselle kept us safe. Phenomenal. And did you have any, when did you really get a sense of the devastation and the loss of life around you? When did that finally kick in? You know, after both towers collapsed, I spoke with my wife, and she's the one who told us how two aircraft had deliberately crashed into the towers, one to the Pentagon, and a fourth was missing. And then it started to sink in. But I think it, it took quite a while before we really understood what, what had happened. Um, all of us were in shock back there that day, and, and it just took a long time for everything to sink in. Thirteen years, as you look back and, and sort of contemplate that day and all that's happened <clears throat> since, can you put into words how it, this event shaped you, changed your life? Over the last 13 years, my career has morphed into now being a full-time public speaker. So I travel and talk to companies and corporations all over the world. And for me, it's really become a time to talk about dealing with change, the fact that change is all around us. And there are things that we can't control about change, but what we always have absolute control over is how we deal with change. And so that's one of the, the messages that I try to bring to people. And the fact that we can live in fear when change or something happens to us, we can live in fear of so many things. But if we do that, then those who want to oppress us have already won. And what we need to do is to deal with our own lives and move forward and work together as a team like Roselle and I did that day and like Africa and I do now. Uh, teamwork is extremely important. Trust is important in our lives. And it's all around us. And it's time that we really deal with that. It's beautifully stated. Let me ask you about the books that you have written in the, uh, in the time since 9-11, uh, 13 years ago. Thunder Dog and then uh, Running with Roselle. Right. Tell us about them. Thunder Dog was the story of what happened on 9-11 as well as a lot of points in my life that helped me prepare to be able to deal with something like the World Trade Center attacks. That is, being able to deal with something unexpected and surviving it. Um, it was a number one New York Times bestseller, and people are able to get it anywhere you can, can get books or on our website, michaelhingston.com. Last year, we published Running with Roselle, which is kind of a little bit more of a youth book, a children's book for eight years old and up, and more adults are buying it than kids. It's more <laughs> about my life and Roselle's life. We parallel the two of us growing up. Again, lessons we learned, how we learned to work together and form a team and um, be able to, to go out and live in the world and survive. So you are a very, very busy man here in Chicago today oh, and tomorrow. and Friday, uh, yes. Give us, uh, give us, and Friday as well, give us a few of the events that we should know about if, if folks want to come out and meet you and learn more about your story. Well, the main one that originally brought us here was being at the Garlands at Barrington tomorrow night. Um, um, an organization, DDS crew, brought me in to, to come and talk, and that's open to the public. It's at uh, 5 o'clock tomorrow night. Friday night we'll be at the Winneka Community House uh, for the Winneka Club and the Hadley School for the Blind. A lot of what we're doing is also trying to help support Hadley and its efforts to, um, to deal with the correspondence courses and the many things it does for blind people. Um, and tomorrow night with the, um, with the event at the Garlands, it's all about 9-11. It's remembering. It's talking about the lessons to be learned. Tonight, we're going to be at the Michigan Shores Club. This afternoon, we're going to be at VI at the Glen. 
Uh, they got us moving all over. <laughs> Hadley set up a lot of things and then other things have happened since, so we're keeping pretty busy. I think you're prepared for whatever comes your way. Michael, it's a pleasure to meet you. It's an honor to meet you. Thank it's you an honor, so much. And thank you very much for having us. All the best. Thank you. To you and to Africa. Affy, good girl, yes. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thank you. We're going to break up next. We're going to check the weather one more time as Good Day Chicago continues. 30 minutes past the hour. Stay with us.